I'm just going to let it stream. Go from the intro. You sure? Yep. Hello. Thanks for your patience. Sorry for the delay. I promise we won't run out of time and this episode will be fantastic. And I look forward to your feedback and I hope to not repeat the situation later. Enough with the puns. If you didn't know, those are the controls to delay pedals. Delay 101 was Friday. And today is Delay 101 Q&A live. So the idea is pretty simple. Uh, to try this experiment of supplementary episodes after an episode. If you were here last week, that one was fun. So this is another. And it'll let me kind of cover in detail, you know, some other stuff and not feel so rushed. Not that I feel rushed. I feel good when we normally film. But this will just be fun. We're hanging out. I do want to make uh, one little note here that's kind of new for us. We've enabled top chat. So if you have a question burning a hole in your soul, that's a good band name, burning a hole in my soul. Uh, if you have one of those, then you can go top chat that because there's just so many people in the comments and we will be more likely to see that. But we are going to go through all the comments and do our best. Uh, you guys are awesome. We had this complication, and so many of you have hung in there because you're fans of delay pedals, and uh, everyone should be. With that said, here's a glance at what we're going to play around with today. I've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, yeah, anyway, we got that. We have, uh, it's going to be fun. Let's jump right into it. I have over here, you can't see any overdrive sounds that I have are just a boss SD1 Wazacraft, real simple, basic overdrive, sounds great. And I'm playing a built electric guitar. So remember Top Chat, and I want to start off this live Q&A uh, Delay 101 supplement episode with a comment. It's a really great comment 
from the episode last week, and it made me realize that I left something out. Before I do that, we actually have a moderator. This is huge for us. It's kind of like becoming adult, you know, stepping into a new phase of life. Uh, the moderator is Addison. He is a production assistant, admin. He organizes better than it. He's like superhuman with organization. Uh, here he is. You want to say hi, Addison? Hello. Katie's also in the room, but she's hiding. Back Katie's hiding. It does not want to be seen. She's also <laughs> part of the team. She's a JHS brand manager, and she helps with a lot of admin. So, yeah, Nick's at home editing, and I think Nick's – is Nick watching? He was just a minute Nick, ago. Nick, you better be watching. That's all I'm saying. No. Let's jump right in. Here's the question that came last week, and it's cool. So, Kira Barsmith says – PT2399 deserved a shout out as well as the Morley oil candle. Only the coolest pedal, 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 piddle, coolest pedal ever. So I did mention oil candles. Um, and I don't, I don't have an oil candle. I don't have this pedal. Am I gonna say that? I just have to have that pedal. I don't have one. I don't have an oil candle. I mean, there's a reason I don't have one. Here's an oil candle. It's massive. It's the size of a PT2 pedal train pedal board. Now you see that big chunky box thing up top? That is the picture of it over on the right. It's it's a it's a metal cylinder that's full of liquid. And uh, let's just say it'll electrocute you and kill you. There's a reason you don't see a lot of these. Um, but I don't have one. Maybe I should get one. I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. If anybody has one laying around and you don't want to risk death, you could send it in. I'll see what I could do with it. But yeah, you're right with your question. The oil can deserves to be talked about, and we just did. And one day I'll demo one. Maybe I'll do a whole episode about the oil can delay. But let's talk about this $23.99 chip set she brings up. I'm actually shocked that I forgot about this because I've used it in my own design so this is quite funny so let's go to the pedal cam let me show you some pedals that use the 2399 so a really great classic one is the tap a delay by John Cusack um, it's there's a tap tempo version a non tap tempo version this is one of the classics I mean in delay period it's awesome he has a little bit different branding now this is an older one uh, but it's it's really great and then you're probably familiar with the Earthquaker Devices Disaster Transport Senior and Junior. This uses the PT2399 as well. And then uh, I've demoed it. Dem I'm having trouble talking, people. I've demoed it before, um, but I'm going to demo it again. It's the Robert Keeley or Keeley Electronics Mag Echo. It's a 2399 and it simulates a tape delay, which is funny. But let's talk about the 2399. So, this is the 2399. The 2399 is, was, let's say, was invented for use in like karaoke machines. It is essentially just a simple chip that allows delay to be created and used in a very simple way. Like there's a data sheet for this. Any of you could go buy a 2399 chipset, go to Google, download a schematic and build a delay. There's only a few ways that it works. And a lot of us pedal builders have like hacked around with it for years. So it was built for karaoke machines and it has become a very useful, uh, very, very useful delay chip. So for instance, I'm not gonna get into this now, but the uh, the Milkman, I'm going to give this one away. That's what I used in here to emulate slapback. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's fine because it's live. Nobody cares. Okay. Did you just say you're going to give that away, Josh? I'm going to give this away. No way. Yeah, I am. I'm giving it away. Wow. And that means free. We'll get to that later. So this 2399 is pretty cool. So I'm going to play Robert's and uh, kind of demonstrate it. One of the characteristics of this chip is that it has a very strange repeat that lies somewhere between how a tape delay feels and how a 
analog delay feels. The repeats get darker and lo-fi as it goes, and it it's hard to explain. There's a granular thing that happens with the repeats. So like repeat, 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 repeat. As you keep going, it kind of crinkles the sound up and it almost adds a white noise into the background. And this is really interesting and it makes it a unique chipset to play with. Now, I mentioned a lot of these versions, but the Mag Echo, I think, I think Robert and his team, this pedal has been out for a while. They probably made my favorite like style pedal with this. I think it's great to emulate tape delay. And I think that um, what they did is awesome. And if you look over here on the pedal cam, there's two white knobs. They added a unique circuit that they created for depth and speed of modulation. So, you know, turning this on, I have to turn the tape, the tape delay on to pass signals, but let's see here. So here's like the clean signal. There's delay somewhere. I mean, I have 400 delay pedals chained up together, so. Yeah. We're good. So the point is, clean signal. So I'm gonna turn the modulation off. Turn the modulation up. As you can tell, it's a really incredible chipset. Now, the coolest part of this chip is that it costs like 60 cents for the chip. Now, when you get into Bucket Brigade chips, which we'll talk about in a minute, they cost a lot of money, they're finicky, they're rare, whatever. So when you order 2399s like we have for the Milkman or some of our other pedals, if one's bad, you just throw it away and you don't cry about it. But Bucket Brigade is a much more expensive process. Um, and the 2399s are just fantastic. Like this pedal that Robert has is very affordable. We've kept the Milkman affordable because of that. And they, if you design with it properly, they're really, really great. So fantastic question, Kira. You're awesome. I'm your biggest fan because that question is really, really good. So let's go and look at this tape delay machine. Let's uh, go straight into tape. Let's take one question about 2399. Let's do that. You wanna do that? Yeah, absolutely. You wanna pick one out? I'm over to Addison here. You're on the hot cam. Oh, I'm on the hot cam, hot dang. Question in particular about 2399. I don't know that we've got a specific question Maybe about not. that. I think one- We could make one up. We could make one up. Um, somebody said, why? Um, like why that chip? Why why is it why is it a good chip to use, Josh? The twenty three ninety nine. Yeah. So with the twenty three ninety nine, I think, like reemphasizing what I said, it's really affordable. It works, and they're easily found. Like you can buy them in bags on eBay. Uh, you know, there's different quality ones. They all have the same sound. It's just made for one thing. Someone's holding a microphone. And there's a karaoke machine like you take home, you buy at Costco or something. That's the Echo. It's it's just made to do Echo. 
Um, I played longer ambient delays here, but it really shines when you keep it away from long repeats. Now, Robert has, through some sort, source of like sorcery and wizardry, kept that decaying noise out of it. Um, I never could figure that out. I'm just being completely honest. And I didn't really need to because I wanted this to be a slapback thing for Tim Marcus of Milkman. So it's really great. I think it's my favorite quick design. Don't reinvent the wheel slapback delay. Mm -hmm. Somebody else. This is a good one. Uh, what's the PT2399 taste like, Josh? The taste? What's it taste like? Well, let me walk you back. It was, uh, I think it was December 12th, 2011. And, uh, that far, huh? I was, yeah, 2000, it might have been 2013. I was really hungry. I was here at the shop by myself and I ate a few of them and they didn't have a taste. All right, next. Moving on. We good? We're good. Moving Tape on. Tape delay. They were transparent. I would say the Definitely. flavor wasn't there. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And, and they're responding to feedback pretty well. So, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? One time I actually tried like a potato chip for a chip and it did nothing. Uh, didn't work. Okay. Didn't work. Okay. All right, cool. Let's look at this tape delay. Um, so tape delay, real one here. Let's zoom out. This is, you know, ground zero point A of mechanical delay. Basically, the technique was invented by Les Paul. There's a ton of history here. Go watch the ultimate history of tape delay. It's one of my favorite episodes we've done. It's a little more historically documentary, any other Y word I could use, fantastically good episode. Mm -hmm. Let me move uh, the weird creepy glove hand and I'm gonna show you this. So I'll stand up here and kind of go through the mechanics of it because we never have time to do this. It's so good. All right. <clears throat> there are two screws. They're worth about $400 a piece. And there is the magic. You take the lid off. It's a good lid, too. It's a good, sturdy lid. Sounds sturdy over here. Yeah. Now let's turn it on. It made creaking noises like a haunted house. So right here, let's... Ooh. I'm doing my own camera work. I'm very talented. Okay. So there's a foot switch to activate it. I don't want to pull it out. There's a tape here, mechanically moving. Let's see. And uh, yeah, I see the tape moving. That's like echo mix, like level. This is the feedback repeats. They called it sustain. It's in the sustain to look three. This is the beautiful thing here. This was what changed delay. Like this, what I'm about to show you is brilliant. So you have a piece of tape. See, it says tape path. When I play my guitar, it is recording on a head and playing it back later according to this. This is playing this head here. See it follow my finger? That's actually playing what was recorded previously wherever I want it in the line. So this metal bar is the same as turning a time knob because you're mechanically moving how far away playback is from the recording. So down here is quick. It travels from here to there. Like, see how fast? Watch this. You get it? It just clicked. There's like a million people on here, and your, your brain just melted out of your face, and you understand the mechanical delay thing now. It's hard to understand unless somebody shows you. So... I always wonder, like, if Les Paul was sitting around and did this, like, he didn't. I know he didn't, but let's max it out.
this is the best use of tape delay, other than how I used it, which is the other best use. <laughs> That's the function of the tape delay. That's a good sound. It's a fantastic sound. Oof. It's uh, it's like the OG delay. I'm going to turn it down because it's so mechanically loud. So when you see pedals, like uh, if you watch the tape delay episode, you'll see, you know, Strymon has the El Capistan and this Keeley pedal emulates that. There's just certain tonal characteristics here about that. Let's, uh, any questions about tape delay? Over to you. Let's see. Um, Over to you, Addison. Somebody wanted to know, have you tried the new Flux Echo by Horizon Devices, by chance? I don't know if that's a tape delay specifically. Um, maybe you could let us know in the comments. I don't have this pedal, and I'm gonna say that. I just have to have that pedal. No, Addison. I haven't played that pedal. Are Back you, to are you. Are you sad about it? No. Are you sure? Because you... It sounds like maybe you're a little sad. I'm fine, man. It's fine. Let's okay. move on. Any yep. other questions? Nope. That's yeah. That's it on that one. Okay. <laughs> Speak now, crowd, or forever hold your peace about tape delay. Anybody? Katie? Tape delay questions across the room? She hates that I even mentioned her name. <laughs> She's writhing mad. Is that a word? Writhing mad? That's a word. Writhing is a That's is a phrase. A word. All right. It's time for Bucket Brigade. You guys ready for Bucket Brigade? I'm ready. Is everybody ready? Everybody out there in the world ready for Bucket Brigade? Let's do this. Come on. Okay. I also want to mention this guitar. I love this guitar. This is a built. No, it's not. It's a Fano. They're, you know, sorry. It's a Fano. Really cool. Three pickups. You pull this out. You get the middle. And one of my favorite straps I've ever owned, Jayco. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the Husky Dog strap. Yeah. Over to the memory man. Let's do pedal cam. Talk about Bucket Brigade. I have to leave the tape delay on, but I turn it down because it has no bypass. Here's the memory man. Let's come out. Steady, steady. Zoom. Hold on. You're pretty talented. Man, I am just killing, killing it. it. I need a job doing this. <laughs> this is great. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> good job. So good. All right, so let's good. talk about Bucket Brigade. Here are some MN3005 Bucket Brigade chipsets. Four of them, they each have four legs apiece. What is four times four? Anybody? Addison? Uh, that would be 16, Josh. 16 legs in these four. It has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I just wanted to break <laughs> the atmosphere. There was some simple math. Thank you. MN3005. Ooh. Now, the Bucket Brigade chipset is awesome. Here's the rundown on it. A company invents it in the 70s. And when you invent a product, you want to sell a ton of it. So who do they go to to offer an exclusive deal on using the Bucket Brigade chipset, this new technology? They go to Roland. And Roland was inventing a new amp called the Jazz Chorus. It wasn't called the Jazz Chorus because the chorus part wasn't there yet. Maybe they designed it around the chip. It's quite possible. But the first ever use of said Bucket Brigade devices was in the Roland JR120. I believe it's the 120 Jazz Chorus. I have one of those somewhere. And uh, the chorus in it is Bucket Brigade, first use ever. They sell a ton. Then they release the CE1 Chorus, which becomes a CE2. So Boss started all this, Bucket Brigade. The Memory Man here, back over to Pedal Cam. The Memory Man is... Uh, late 70s, but I believe 76, 77. Uh, and it's true bucket brigade. So the first question that always comes to mind is what in the world is a bucket brigade, right? Are people already asking that? That's yep. Like, absolutely. We have people asking what's a bucket brigade. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So a bucket brigade is simply answered by this picture and I'm going to show this picture. And we're going to have a moment of silence.
That was fun. I really just need to take a drink of something. <laughs> so let's look at the picture here. In the comments, let's name these three people. This is a bucket brigade. This is an old firefighting technique. I don't think these dudes are firefighters. I, what do you think, Addison? I'm going to say no. Uh, Maybe they are. Nope, they're not. You pass a bucket to the next person, to the next person, and it goes from point A to point Z through a bucket brigade, right? Everybody kind of understand the process. We're wanting to pass a bucket of water from point A to point Z with a line of people called a bucket brigade. So in a circuit, we want to pass your guitar signal. This is a great site, Electro Smash. Go check it out. Uh, we want to go from the input here. The Over on the left side, it says in. We want to simply go from in with guitar signal. So not water. We don't want to pour water into our pedals. Look at me right in the eye. Don't ever pour water into your pedal. Back to the schematic. Input signal passed through buckets of capacitors that time delay the effect and release it with other circuitry. So these guys holding water, guitar tone, the, the dudes themselves are capacitors. They don't look like it, but trust me. And you have delay. So let's play analog delay and be working on your questions. I expect a flood of questions. The primary characteristic of an analog delay, the autofocus is wigging out on this front camera. Yep. Right here. Uh, the primary deal here is that the repeat through the bucket brigade system, as it passes from one person to the next, it is essentially getting darker and darker and darker. So listen to each repeat. So clear, dark, 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 dark. Let's turn the repeats up. And it like actually gets incredibly nasty. Oh, we're on manual focus. Wow, we're fancy here. Let's see. I'm gonna try to get this to a place where it doesn't oscillate. One of the beautiful things about bucket brigade delays is they oscillate and run away, which I will do here. But let's try to just demonstrate the tonality of it decaying. Oh, check it out. Let's do this. So listen to each repeat. Initial repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. As I go further and further away from the initial strike of the string, every repeat is dark. Darker. So go to a track in your head like uh, Radiohead, OK Computer, Karma Police is the song. At the end of the song, you know, it's pretty chill. You hear this runaway crazy noise. He's using probably a DM2 or a Memory Man. That 
that kind of thing. That's analog delay. That was my favorite sound that you've made yet. That was beautiful. That was your favorite? Oof. What kind of, over to you, what kind of questions we got about yep. we Bucket actually, Brigade? We, we've got some really good ones. Juicy uh, questions? Uh, juicy. So juicy. Let's do it. Um, this, is, this is an interesting thought. How close is something like a simulated BBD to real BBD? And I think I've seen a couple of people ask, like, there are kind of newer chips being released, right, for, you know, yeah. substitution. So what are your thoughts about that, Josh? What are my thoughts? Let me go grab a thought. Entertain them. Ooh, entertain you. you. Oh, man. Hot takes. Uh, Josh is going to grab a pedal right now from this room uh, of pedals that we have. Whenever you ask him a question, I do this often. I'm like, hey, Josh, I have a question for you. And he'll grab the pedal. It's amazing. And he'll explain this thing to me. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's climbing a shelf right now to get a pedal to explain and answer a question. Hey, Nick, those mics that we set up, they're Sorry. they're uh, not set up Sorry, anymore. Sorry, I risked my life for the fans. You do that for It is fans. my job to educate. Thank you, Josh. Did you guys really have those in phase? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. All right, let's answer that question. Back over to me. Back over. Take something like the Source Audio Nemesis Delay, this guy here. Uh, we're on manual focus, so back to my head. Source audio nemesis delay. Let's use a pedal cam. Oh, that's easy. Um, think of something like the Strymon. Is it Brigadier? Is that its name? I believe that's how you say it. I yep. used to say it wrong. Uh, that's what I've heard anyway. So the question there is, can you emulate the MN305 or MN3205? Can you emulate that? So the question is, it's perfect timing because on the table, you see this green pedal here. I'm going to demo this. That is huge to this answer. You emulate through digital signal processing, DSP. Okay. Now, we did see where Keeley's magnetic echo, uh, this kind of emulates this. It's a different situation. So we're wanting to emulate Bucket Brigade with digital. It started off really rough. Like, uh, there's old stuff like Zoom 505s, things like that. They actually have cool delay sounds, and they never really claimed to emulate Bucky Brigade. But then Line 6 comes along with the greenie here, which we'll get to later, and they actually have a mode that says Bucky Brigade. Okay. So they obviously thought they were good enough at replicating a specific effect that they called it what it was. So if you look here, we have analog right there that analog is emulating this and is it good or bad that's the question it's really good right now people like source audio the new like starting with this line six this is like you know this is 1999 october of 1999 it got really good and it just got better and better strymon i think made huge strides Strymon made strides. No, there's Ooh. nothing there. Is it Strymon made strides? Uh, line six, like the HX effects, the helix. Long-winded answer is yes. And I actually get really excited about how good DSP is. I don't know anything about making DSP. It's not my ballgame, but I love working with talented DSP people um and just seeing how far it's come tc electronics like that has to be noted the nova delay was probably big and crucial in all of that that's a great question you got another yeah. one yeah one i more? do back yep. over to you our uh, our bucket brigade delays more expensive to make than say a digital delay um yeah absolutely because so for us imagine uh you know i'm gonna make like the Panther Cub, which started as the Panther. This uses several MN3205s to get one second. Each chip is roughly just a few milliseconds, and you have to stack them to get more. So the amount of chips we get that don't work, they don't meet the spec. I mean, you're wasting tons of time and money simply for the art of making an analog delay. I'll say that in 2020, this is like really funny because I'm I make a living on this product. Like two people in the room get paid because we sell pedals. But 
there is a bit of novelty in this at, at 2020. I'll just, I can be the first to say that's fine. P other people are aware of this. There is something organically tangible about Real Bucket Brigade. Absolutely. There's a feeling there. It's not, it's hard to even measure. Maybe it's like in our minds. It's not though. You can analyze it. You can see that the unpredictability, the roughness of it is part of the charm. And when you're doing digital with something like Source Audio, they're actually replicating the errors in these chips. So it's just easier to make a digital delay. And I just answered that as in the longest form possible. That's interesting. Yeah. Errors in yeah. chips are what yeah, we I mean, love. Part, I mean, and back the to the tape delay here, like zooming back out. If you, uh, hold on, let me be a cameraman. If you zoom back out here, the errors, this is a nightmare. This is like squeaky part. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it on the stream. It's like, it's, you know, there's like squeakiness. The tapes wear out. Um, the lid here says, you know, like it says inside the lid to prevent loss of echo, clean tape heads roller frequently. I mean, nobody's going to clean that. Nobody has time for that. I brush I sure my teeth don't. once a day, but I'm not brushing my tape heads <laughs> once a day. You know what I'm saying? I guess if you love delay, maybe you would. Maybe you would. Maybe you would. I don't know. I got two more questions for you, Josh. Yeah, let's keep on uh, going. Back to you. What chipset do you use in the JHS Panther? 3205. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Next. Yep. This one's um, this one's pretty hard to... The 500 unit oh, that okay. we made for like a hot minute had yep. the MN3005. Hey. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, how many buckets could a bucket b bucket brigade? <laughs> Let me start over. How many buckets could a bucket b brigade? If a bucket could buck brigades, do you know the answer to that question? How many buckets could a bucket brigade? If a bucket br could brigade buckets, that's pretty close. We'll go with that. I think if it's a M in 305, it's 3,005. Got it. That's pretty a, easy. Yep, that math was great. That was simple. Yep. All right, let's move on. Move digital. On. Let's. We've talked about digital, modern digital, when I talk about something like this. Let's go to where digital started. The first ever digital delay pedal was not this goat. Is that a goat or a ram? It doesn't matter. Um, it was this DD2 right here. So again, Roland, let me throw this out. Roland uses the Bucket Brigade first in the, in the Jazz Chorus, then the CE1. The CE2, the first compact analog delay was the DM2. Before that, this, this memory man that's giant, the original ad said compact delay. That's funny to me. No one's laughing. But then they have the first ever digital delay in a small compact format. Oh man, look at that. Dang. Yeah, so this guy is the first compact digital delay ever. This is early 80s, and they simply took technology that they had, a chip that they designed, and crammed it in the pedal from a rack unit. That's one of those Roland SD rack units. Um, so let me demo it. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Let's I want to hear it. it. I don't know if I've ever heard of DD2, if I'm being completely honest with yeah, you. Yeah, so digital is a computer. That is what it is. So this is a computer from the early 80s recording your signal just like the t tape head here is recording. It's the same process. Everything's this process. This is the best visual. It's like seeing the notes on a piano for theory. That's what this helps you with. But this is basically the first ever digital version of that. So that focus is hot. Check it out. Not going? There we go. Hey. Let's play it. That's like the speed metal version of Joshua Tree, right there. 
You like that? I loved it. So it's a computer, and the point of digital is really clear. That is a pun. It records your signal and repeats it just like it recorded it. And then if you have a tone control or something, you can darken it. Like we put that on the Lucky Cat. But it does a clear repeat. And it was a big deal because up until then, people only had the Memory Man or the DM2. And they thought analog was bad. Like analog was still like, oh, I don't want to use analog. I want digital. Everyone wanted digital. Behind me, up here, I'm not going to bother. I have a Roland unit. Can you see it in this shot? Nah, it's fine. I have a Roland unit that says Roland Digital Chorus, but it's actually analog. People want a digital so bad that brands actually called their analog gear digital. Now it's backwards. Everybody wants analog, so digital emulates analog. Does that make sense? Is that deep? It's like a that, deep cut. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty deep. Yeah. So check it. So that's a computer that recorded my guitar and is just repeating it. That's all it's doing. And it does it really well. So the DD2 is the first. And then what's great about Boss is you have DD2, DD3. You notice there's not a DD4? I'm not going to tell you why. I know why. That's for an episode I'm planning. Evil Grin. Uh, yeah, let's questions about digital delay. We've got a few, a few really good ones. Um, a question that just comes to mind for me and, uh, uh, let's see here. Andrew Booth said, I've owned uh, DD3, DD5, DD7. Uh, you have most of the DD series. Do you have a favorite? All of them. You have all. Multiples. You have multiples of all of Boston's Well, there are, di there's yeah. several different DD2s and it's like, it's things like the back labels black versus pink little things or whatever I, yep. yeah my favorite's a dd5 it's yeah. if if i had to pick a top 10 the dd5 is in it um yeah definitely yep. and james brooks says i mean a good follow-up to that i know james hey oh, james hey james I, I remember you what makes the dd5 the holy grail of boss dd5 pedals because i'd agree that's my favorite boss digital uh, delay. i think I think there's this thing that it was made in the 90s. Nobody got it. It's the first, again, Boss made the first compact tap tempo delay pedal. They made the first every delay pedal. Like, you have to understand, Boss is so Boss, pun intended. Good name. Um, that's my band name. <laughs> now, the DD5 is just, it's nostalgic. It's the first. It sounds amazing. Like, for me, we talked about this the other day. If you pop up the knobs all to noon on the dotted eight setting oh dog it's like in it's the best dotted eighth delay i've ever heard Perfect. until they release the dd3t the new tap tempo version Ooh. they released it this year like right before the whole like covid mess in early spring yep the dd3 it's basically the dd3t is like the re i think it's the reissue of the dd5 mm, i'm okay. not i don't work for boss i'm not speaking for them but i think it is Got it. In my opinion, which doesn't matter, I it's as good. Yep. But the DD5 is old, and it has memories. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next question is from Ezra Elliott. Do digital delays actually sound better as our technology in microprocessors becomes more advanced, or is it about how the chips are programmed by the pedal engineers? That's a great question. I think that that is... Uh, I don't think DSP is making anything clearer. As you heard the DD2 here, this is from back in the day. I actually don't know the processor rate or of memory or anything there. It's good. It's super clear. I mean, we have to remember the guitar, the great thing about us, the guitar is that it's, it, it, it has imperfections in tonality. Like the way pick, I mean, we're using it. 
all every guitar in this room we talked about this before the other day they're all designed in the 60s and we love them the tube behind me is valve tubes there's way better clearer um devices for amplification but we don't like them because we actually like loss a lot of us a lot of you aren't realizing the things you like in certain tonalities is that it's actually degrading your signal and it's like low pass and it's getting rid of harsh things so is it getting better i think most digital people like if we go back to that Ameris delay or the nemesis that I showed mm-hmm. from source or a Strymon delay, they're actually having to go in and make the signal worse to be accurate. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. We'll do one Absolutely. more. Maybe there yep. might be a lot on the digital. Uh, this is a great last question for us. Uh, Hans VL. He says, is it true that if you combine a delay, like a boss DD three digital delay and a chorus, like a CH one, um, it replicates that signature slapback echo sound, uh, similar to like sun's records tone. Yeah, read it one more time. Yep, absolutely. Make sure. Is it true that if you combined a boss delay pedal, digital delay pedal, like a DD3, and a chorus like the CH1 Super Chorus, uh, it helps yeah. replicate that signature slapback echo sound, similar to something you'd find like uh, yeah. the Sun's Records tones? Yeah, I think so, because back to this, I'll zoom out. This is that sound, and the mechanical parts wearing out cause modulation because as as this tape moves it's a little you you get the point as it's moving through here it actually like it's not perfect and it's mod it's bending the tape and causing modulation so on a lot of delays including roberts here you actually see um you know he added modulation to make it sound like tape and that is key yes so you could take a dd2 and add some chorus in there and yeah it would especially if the delay has an effects loop like uh there's some delays that allow you to put other effects in the repeats only and you could build it any way you want it that's yeah. awesome let's uh Good let's demo a dl4 because i think Please. it's super historic yes super historic pedal um Josh, this guy yeah how many dl4s have you owned in your lifetime how many dl4s yeah since it's so historic at one time, me and then John, who's a technician here, he's been my friend forever, and he, he's worked at JHS for like 12 years, 11 years. We both had two on our board at one time. Hey. I would stack them using expression pedals, too. It's awesome. It's a fantastic delay. And keep in mind, it's 20 years old, and I think it hangs with any new delay. Wow. Yeah. It's great. You heard it Let, here, folks. Yeah, let's demo it. Let's do I'm it. I'm just going to go through the settings and just play. I'll play the first sound I ever heard on it, the reverse setting, which in 99, 2000 was like, I wanted to sound like Oasis, and it had reverse delay, and I was in heaven. amazing uh i'll go to the digital with mod which is basically what he just asked can you combine mod with a digital
the sweep echo is very interesting. Low res is a good example of they're creating a delay to sound worse than the processor actually wants to. Yeah, so one of the biggest features of this that really set it apart is the looper. Um, and if you're not aware, I've been I've been working a long time on a basically a documentary about this whole series. Tons of phone calls, tons of hours. George Tripps, way huge. Now he's at Dunlop. He was part of this initial team. He had had way huge pedals, and then he goes into Line Six to help develop this. This is the first of the four by four series, and he had he made sure the looper was in there. He had a friend that did a lot of looping, put that in, and then tap tempo. If you noticed all the other. 4x4s, the blue one or the gold one, they all have four settings. And he made sure, well, three settings and we have to have tap tempo. Tap tempo, up until that point, the DD5, right? And they kind of discontinue it. And the DL4 just exploded. One of the phone calls I was on with one of the product developers that was there at Line 6 said they didn't realize like how well it was going to do to right after the release, they went to see Radiohead. Second Radiohead reference today. And they did this thing at the end, probably Karma Police, live, where it just feedback and oscillation, and the, they walk up the stage, and the camera zoomed in in this massive stadium on the DL4. And they stood there as, like, the team. That had to be, like, this amazing feeling. But this pedal is awesome. you got to go get one. Get a used one. They're not really that expensive. The switches do break. They can be modded. Tons of people do that. Yeah, that's the DL4. Let's uh, do any question. One question about the DL4. One question. Okay, I've got right. five. Hold on. Let me see. Do two. Um, do two. It's do fine. two. Okay. Um, this is a really interesting and curious question, Eric uh, Panito. Panedo. Um, from my research on the DL4, there are a couple of versions. Care to explain? Is that? Do you know anything about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not really. There's not really. I mean, there's cosmetic differences. So there, there's nothing tonally different so there's versions where this is silver um the processing system is all the same and to the point that they didn't want to change it when you play this there is a perception of volume loss one of the first things i did as a pedal modifier was go in here and change two resistors and make it a little louder it's not actually qu quieter it's a perceptional thing that's a problem and they realized that people were asking and the story basically is George was like, we're not modding these. We're not changing it. Robert Keeley do it. He sends him the mod and Robert became the guy that modded him. I modded him after there's several other people. They just kind of left it alone. So that's a little, that's a bit of a rumor. You know, I wouldn't doubt there's some kind of revision to a circuit board in some way, but the processing and the schematic in no way changed. Yeah. That's great. Okay, uh, next question. Um, is the Line 6 Echo Park the same, but in a smaller enclosure? Oh, man, y'all getting into all my upcoming episodes. Yeah, Echo, mm. the Echo Park series, so that's the uh, Tone Core series. Those are redesigned. Like, they're different, but building on that. They came a few years later. And just a little inside fact, when you see Maris pedals, Maris audio, maybe it's Maris audio. Anyway, Angelo there was the head designer at line six on the tone cores. So when you play tone core pedals, you notice they're a little strange. Like the flanger has these wacko sounds and the delay that there's things that they do. There's Easter eggs in those pedals too. That's actually like pre Maris. So line six tone cores are pre Maris. Your heads are exploding. It's fine. I can okay. see that explosions right. happening from here. Let's uh, let's show some JHS delays. Yes. And I'll play this milkman and give it away. We want to do that. Are we up for that? 
All right, so we have quite a few here to show. Um, we'll do it the good old fashioned way. Yeah, Addison will hook this up, but I'll talk through the different delays. So this is the Panther Cub, it's fine. Oh yeah, I'll mute it. Panther Cub, this is our bucket brigade delay. So this focus is hilarious, hold on. Hold on people. When you do live, you, you sacrifice some flu fluidity. It's all right. What? There we go. That's the Panther Cub. So this is our analog delay. You could equate this to the Memory Man or the DM2 kind of thing. He's plugging in the Pink Panther, which is Lucky Cat. Sorry, MGM sent me a letter on that one. That's a whole other story. Um, Lucky Cat delay. It's digital. So... What I'll do is I'll play that one for you real quick. So we have a darken knob here, which is really cool. Um, it lets you go from the full on perfect digital or darken it up for analog, analog type. You can go add some modulation setting to it. Ratios. Yeah, it's just a really simple, it's complicated enough to give you some features, but at the heart of it, that's me wanting to do something like the DD5. And Robert Keeley actually did the DSP for this. So I don't know how known that is. We told everybody but sometimes people don't listen yeah so this is kind of a keely dsp uh kind of my design handed over to him and he finished it up it's cool so let's do the cub versus that i'll mute it so you guys don't get your head blown off yeah so the cub we switch over there it's gonna be the analog like i said so kind of like the memory man that whole vibe we good have the same kind of layout with an EQ here. I'll do quarter notes. This is the delay that's always on my board. I'll show you my settings. You guys have probably seen this in videos or whatever. I never turn this pedal off and it's always quarter note. Like about like that. If you notice while I'm playing, it's not in the way. It's just there. So you know, I leave it on. I never turn it off. think of a lot of our pedals, I think we're all pretty proud of this from an engineering standpoint, um, having so many bucket brigades stacked so that you get the feeling of a memory man or a DM2, but you get a lot of modern features. This was the second ever analog tap delay after the diamond memory lane. We had the Panther big version is what I'm speaking of. And it evolved into this in a smaller case. It has modulation on the side over here, tap tempo expression. It's really cool. Let's jump over to this pedal I'm going to give away, the Milkman. So Tim Marcus, go check out uh, Milkman Amplification. The amp that a lot of you guys have seen, the Loud is More Good. He builds those in San Francisco. That's basically like, hey, Tim, build me a Milkman amp that you don't really make right now. I wanted to do this, and that's what he did. So, yeah. So this pedal's divided up into two spots. And did I mention one of you will have this meld to you? Probably tomorrow. It's exciting. So this is, the white knobs are all delay. And then it has a simple boost. Now, up here, the tape delay that's up above it. One cool thing about tape delays in here 
is that they have a preamp in them and that preamp sounds good. So I emulated that with a basic transistor amplifier and let's check it out. Too loud. That's all right. I killed everybody through the speakers. But yeah, so that's what that is. We won't mess with that. But this is killer, like just hitting a tube amp. It's really beautiful. Let's turn this delay on. And it's all about slap. It's all about the perfect kind of short time delay. A lot of people that love the memory man use it for slap and this has been a great replacement for a lot of people so tape delay slap memory man analog slap delay it uses the 2399 uh, karaoke chip it uses that guy and it's awesome really proud of it let's give it away hey. over to Addison what do we got here we're gonna ask a question I'm gonna ask a question here's the question so we're gonna pick from a few people uh, that might get this right. It's kind of tough. So here's the question. What was JHS Pedals first delay pedal ever? What was JHS Pedals first delay pedal ever? Enter your answers and uh, we're going to go to a quick little uh, little uh, standby and uh, let you let you enter that in. 30 seconds, one minute, something like that. Perfect. Let's, let's go, go for let's it. Go let's go one minute. It. All right, we have we have picked our winner. The correct answer to this is the original OG Pink Panther delay. It used the 2399 as well, tap tempo. Um, this is old school. This is like 2009-ish. Uh, these are really rare. The prices these go for are scary. I do not like how expensive they've gotten. These knobs, funny thing actually from Radio Shack. We would go down the road and buy them and they were like $6 a piece, which is insane. Hand stamp. But yeah, this is it. And the winner is over to Addison. Winner is Shane Train. Hand of a, hand Woo! of applause. Hand of clapping. Hand of applause, everybody. Congrats. Everybody. That's Shane. a weird view when you lean back. Check it. I'm in the view, but I'm also in the view. That's creepy. Let's not ever look at that again. Please no. All right. Shane, um, send me an email to claim yes. your prize over to you over to you oh over to me send me an email addison at jhspedals.com a-d-d-i-s-o-n you're gonna get like 60 emails that aren't him i might but it's you fine. know what that's cool that's cool i can i can uh we'll verify him we'll verify we you. have people and the government levels of things Ooh. with stuff we have lots of stuff, people. Don't mess with us. So much stuff. Uh, let's move over to an actual Q&A and do yep. five questions and close this thing down. It's You're going to love your pedal. Just look at it right here. This is it. You're going to get this pedal. You're going to get the box. And uh, let's make a tradition of any live we do like this. We just give away something. I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. That's a good tradition. All right. Let's head over and do a Q&A. It's time for Q&A. Time All right, so we're just going to, Addison's going to moderate out five of these. We're going for we're it. We're just going to go for it. Let's do five. I'm yep. excited. Woo. I'm going to take a drink of LaCroix. Here we go. 
All right, here's here's a good first question to kick everything off since we gave one away. Why is the milkman called the milkman? The milkman is called the milkman because I made it for my friend Tim Marcus and he owns an amplifier company called Milkman Amplification. So sorry, that's his logo. We see let's see if it zooms in if the autofocus works. Yeah, sort of. There we go. Milkman Amplification. He also makes the Loud is More Good amplifier. That's why it's called the Milkman. And his family uh, were actual milkmen. And all of his amps are named like after milk products like Creamer, Derriere. Yeah, great question. Four more. Great question. Riffs, Beards, and Gear. If Josh could make his own modern reissue of the DL4, what would he change or improve? Or would he? Nothing. It's a good answer. I couldn't do it. It would be like, it would just feel wrong. It'd be like rewriting. It'd be like rewriting, like, I don't know, To Kill a Mockingbird or something. You I can't, can't do that. You can't rewrite history. It's and it's, it's history. If you rewrite history, all you've done is make something new. Let that sink in. Hey, which uh, takes us on to our next question. Okay. Um, are there any delays coming out that aren't just, you know, copies or things of old pedals? Any new kind of things? Should I go climb the shelf? I mean, you can go climb the shelf. All right, it's on you. It's oh, on you. it's on me. Uh, I'm going to tell you about my favorite delay. Uh, a little story until Josh comes back here. My favorite delay pedal ever is... Ah! Oh, he's dying over there. It's a Deluxe Memory Man Tap Tempo. Uh, it has the Panasonic chips, and I just lucked out. It was a new old stock drop in 2015, 2014. My wife and I were on vacation, and I stopped into a music store, and that music store didn't have one. However, um, I called CME that day because the guy said, why don't you call CME? That seems like a pedal that they'd get in if, if there really is these new old stock pedals dropping. How you doing over there, Josh? You dying? You okay? I'm good. You're okay. I'm good. Sorry if my story's bothering anyone here. Uh, you can't ask me a simple question. <laughs> I, my he, brain hurts. He's, his brain hurts, and this is overcomplicated, but you know what? That's why we're here is for complicated things because that's what we do. We just like, we love pedal history. So so anyways, I call CME, uh, a man named Adam answers, and sure enough, there is a Deluxe Memory Man. I buy it, and I show up after vacation, and there it is, and I've had it ever since. It's lovely. Josh, you're back. Welcome back. I'm back. I He's survived. Back. Anything Maris does, just go look at Maris. Philippe's Caroline pedal, the Kilobyte, it uses the karaoke chip. It's one of the most creative uses of the karaoke chip. Sounds awesome. Has a runaway foot switch. Tysco delay. Don't hear enough about this. About to do an episode on Tysco. Um, this is a Bucket Brigade delay, but it it gets crazy and they did that on purpose it's just killer i mean even the looks of this yeah i want to say so much i'm saving it for the episode uh alexander pedals he tends to do really strange things that like make me triple take and then once i get used to it i'm like genius uh this radical delay is it does really crazy stuff and then last but not least would be death by audio something like the echo dream I mean, the name is Advanced Echo Modulation. It's great. I think this is twenty three ninety nine as well. Don't quote me on that, but there you go. A few more questions? Thanks for that. Uh, Luis uh, Colmenares. Okay. Apologies if I'm not saying that well. Uh, do bucket brigade delays need a clock signal, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They have to have something telling them how the buckets work. But, well, yeah. That was so oversimplified, it was disgusting, but yes. Great. Right, okay, uh, Callum Doherty says, how does the tape wipe the recording? How does the what? How does the tape of a tape delay wipe oh. the recording? Yep. Yeah, no, that's a good question. It's a very, that's good, a question. very good question. Yep. So if we go over here, zoom on out. Uh, erase head. Got it. Yeah. What's actually going on in the erase head? Because it's magnetic, right? Yeah, just yeah. the tape is magnetic. So, you know, as as it goes through, it just erases, literally. Got like, it. Like, uh, I don't know. I'll show my age here. I'm almost 90. When I was a kid, we uh, would 
you'd you'd record stuff. You know, you're watching ABC with your family. Harry and the Hendersons comes on. You pop in a v- VHS tape. You record it. You watch it five, six thousand times, and you're like, man, let's record Aladdin now. So you have this thing. You run the tape through, and it erases it. Anybody remember that in the room? No? Nope. That's fine. I'm You're old. too old. All right, back to you. All right. One, one more. Yep. Final question. Last final question, and forgive me, it is a JHS-related question, Josh. I know you That's hate fine. that. Oh, it is okay. All right, here we That's go. That's fine. It's fine. Hold on. <laughs> Which is more versatile, in your opinion, uh, the lucky cat or the cub? If you're going to buy one, which one would you buy, Lucky Josh? cat, absolutely. Lucky cat. Again, I'm really proud of the Cub, and people that love it are, like, obsessed with it, love it. And there, it is special, tonally, the feel of it. But in a pedalboard situation with limited space and you need something to be more versatile, Lucky Cat, absolutely. That's awesome. Because the tone knob will get you there. It'll roll off and make it dark. Yeah, yeah I think. Is that it? I think we're good. We Are good? we good? Katie, yep. it's your call if we shut it down. Are we shutting it down? Okay. All right. <laughs> this has been a real blast. Uh, I don't have anything else to say. I want to do some more of these. This was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. You guys are the best ever. So glad you're into this stuff. So glad that yeah. um, you're into like the education element of learning how stuff works, why it works, why you should buy things and not just going off hearsay or opinion, but like trying to figure out what actually works. So I encourage you in that. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out when we post on Instagram or stuff or uh, whatever you can do. And we'll be back Friday with another episode. Yeah, Josh, one more? One yes, more? one more question. Okay. Where can they go if they're interested in, in a deeper dive on some of the subjects that we talk about? Uh, it's tough because that's what we're trying to do as a show. Um, I, I think on the deeper dive level, though, w- Brian Wampler's YouTube channel. Like right. He's actually breadboarding stuff. You can learn a lot about drives. Brian Wampler is like an overdrive mad genius teacher. He's very good at laying that out. I think that uh, I think that that's a very good resource. This site that uh, Electro Smash right here, electrosmash.com is really great. That's the wrong cue. Um, yeah, there's there's some different sites. There's a site called DIYStompboxes.net. DIYStompboxes.net. There's some really great designers and people on there. Yeah, and just get around people that might know more than you and try to learn. Yeah, and just to close it off, I just want to remind you, the JHS show, you can go on there and there's articles. Uh, Some of you can't necessarily watch episodes, so this is an old screenshot. There's actually like a billion of these now. You can go suggest an episode. It goes into a black hole of suggestions, and that's fine because they're there. They're there, and you put it in there, and it's awesome. And then there's merch. No, record time. If you're ever looking for music, every single record I've ever suggested over 100-plus episodes is on here. So that's fun. And then there is merch where you can go over and buy funny shirts that you don't need, stuff like that. Posters. There's actually new stuff since this screenshot. And then last but not least, uh, on the education front and just what we're doing as a show to bring on more staff to do what we're doing even better, there's a Patreon. I do exclusive long-form talks. That's a tour of Denmark Street in London, which has actually changed drastically through COVID. Uh, Most interesting man in the world. This is a talk about a guy that invented tons of stuff and brought pedals into America in new ways. Live Q&As that nobody's involved in but us. Uh... Yeah, Clapton is God. It's a further look at the Blues Breaker episode. I just put up one that's called Color and Effect. I wrote a basically around a 10,000 chapter, 10,000, 10,000 chapter. Could you imagine that? 10,000 word chapter in a book that's being published. And it's about the aesthetics of stomp boxes. So I did a long talk on that. I just recorded an episode that's being edited. We'll probably get it up next week. Maybe Addison. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yep. We will. For maybe. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll try. It's we'll- <laughs> going to catch us up. And <laughs> we will it's try. Called, uh, we will. It's on clones. It's basically history of clones. Part one, the big muff. And I go over like historical big muff clones. So that's it. I really am leaving. And because I don't have an outro screen, I'm going to play that intro screen again. And you guys will just love it. Bye. See ya.